Hey everybody, it's the Digital Golf Doc, and today we're going to be talking about one of the most important concepts in all of golf, the kinetic sequence. It's so important that Titles Performance Institute actually says it's the one thing that every single golfer at the professional level, those getting paid to play the game, do the same. The kinetic sequence simply is the order in which we move our body when we deliver the club to ball. So a simplified version is to think of it as hips, torso, arm, club. So when we start the downswing, we want to go hips first, torso second, arms, club. Now you can get more detailed. You can talk about ground reaction forces just like I do in this video, which is also an important factor in the golf swing. But the chances are you can focus on these four things of the kinetic sequence, and if you're doing them, you're probably checking the other boxes too. So let's take a look about how that looks on paper. This is the kinematic sequence in graph form. So at the bottom across the x-axis, you essentially have time elapsed. On the y-axis, you're looking at rotational velocity. So you're basically looking at the speed of rotation. Um, so you can see that there is a zero here on the bottom of the graph. So these parts of the graph are actually the backswing because Rotational velocity has to have a positive and negative, basically negative being away from the target. So this bottom graph is the movement away from the target. And then you'll see that those things accelerate and go up in the opposite direction as they start to go toward the target in the downswing. So what we see with the kinetic sequence is a certain order that happens between the vast majority of tour players. And that order being hips, torso, arm, club. So if you look at where these peak, you're going to see that the hip velocity, rotational velocity, peaks here. The trunk velocity peaks shortly after that, and then the arm, and then the club. And so that's what we're talking about when we say consistent kinetic sequence. So almost everyone is going to have that on the tour. Now what's really cool is you actually apply the same thing to other sports. So if you look at throwing javelin, or if you look at a baseball pitcher, or even a baseball batter, they have the same kinetic sequence because it's the most optimal way to develop velocity, club speed, bat speed, ball speed, whatever it is. The hips fire first, then the trunks add on top of the hip, adding more velocity, then the arms add to the trunk, and then the club adds to the arms. So the thing is, if you get this out of order, you start to be suboptimal and you start to leak power all over the place. So if you start your upper body first, you don't have the ability to add that onto the peak forces of the other parts of the kin kinematic sequence, and you start to lose um, overall speed. So that's why it's so important to get these things firing in order. So it's why I spend so much time trying to teach you all about firing the hips first because that's what most people struggle with. And if you don't fire the hips first, then you don't start that kinematic sequence right and you start to leak power. And then it's about getting the upper body and then the arms and then the club. So I hope this helps you to see it in graph form. I know this was kind of eye-opening for me the first time I saw it. This data is gathered with a, a K-Vest, which is just a series of accelerometers throughout the body so that we can pick up when things are peaking at certain speeds. And I think it's really helpful. And then we're going to go back into the other part of this video here where you can see how it plays out with a club in your hand. And I think if you understand those two things, it's going to really help you understand what and how you need to train for things. Now that we hopefully have a good understanding of the kinetic sequence on paper, let's check out what it looks like with a club in our hand. So I'm going to set up, and I'm going to go to the top of the backswing, because as we've already talked about, the kinetic sequence is really about the downswing. You can get to the top of the swing however you want, as long as you get the order correct on the way down. So I will take my swing up, and again, what we want to see is hips first. So I'm going to push into the ground, and I'm going to get my hips moving. Once my hips start moving, my torso is going to move, then my arms, then I'm going to release the club, hopefully right in time to contact the ball, and that's going to be the, give me the maximum power and the maximum consistency. Now, if it goes wrong, and I'm talking to the slicers here, that's where you, a lot of, you get a lot of these crazy ball flights. For example, if you hit a slice, there's a good chance you're getting out of the kinetic sequence, and I'll show you why. If I take myself to the top of the swing, slices are caused by over-the-top movement. Usually that means we're going arms first, then our hips come in, and we're cutting 
out to in on the golf ball. That gives us the left to right spin for a right-handed golfer and sends the ball off in the right direction. Except for those few times you square it up and you launch it way left for a pull. Why that matters with the kinetic sequence is because at this top of the swing position, if I fire my hips first, look what happens to the club in my arm. It automatically starts dropping my elbow in, preparing me as long as I maintain that kinetic sequence to come into out on the golf ball, where I'm either going to put a neutral spin or a right to left spin for the draw. So what you see is professionals get that sequence right, and then a lot of times they're going to manip manipulate the club face or the angle of the club just a little bit to change shot shapes. But it's why they're not hitting these massive, massive 50-yard slices like a lot of the amateurs out there. So, again, it's not important just for power. It's also really important for consistency. So if you want to see if you do this well, you have a few options. You can go to a golf instructor. They'll be able to watch you and tell, especially if they have a K vest, which is where that data comes from on the graph we were talking about before. Or you can slow motion video your own swing. So most people can do this with their phones with the driving range. You get a face on view, you get a down the line view, and you're going to watch to see if it looks like your hips go first and everything else follows. Now, there is one thing I particularly like to look for that's a giveaway that we are in or out of the correct kinetic sequence. And it's, where is the left butt cheek for a right-handed golfer? So if I'm taking a swing as a right-handed golfer and I've got this down the line view, then what I should see is by the time the club is delivered to the ball, my left glute should be on camera. So if I'm here and I go hips first, you'll see my left glute on the camera before ball contact. If I go arms first, you're typically not going to see that left glute either at all or in, until after contact. You can also look at the degrees of how much of the left glute and hip you see coming around during the swing. And that's usually a dead giveaway that we're not getting our hips involved. We're not utilizing ground reaction force in our golf swing. So if you have trouble with that, when you check out that video, I've got exercises here that can help you sequence those hips correctly. Again, this is not the only thing we pay attention into on the, to the golf swing, but it might be the most important thing because it's hard to hit a great golf shot consistently if you're not sequencing correctly. I hope you learned something today. I'm going to keep doing videos on it. I'm going to help you guys. We're going to use the gym. We're going to use exercises for coordination, for control, for strength, for motion in order to help you get a better golf swing. Thanks and have a great day.